Hi, everybody. So I was listening to a rabbi that runs a summer camp for teens every summer talk about his experiences over the years. And he was saying that he's found that often at the beginning of these trips, the teens would be quite reserved, uh, maybe a little bit uh, shy or just not really willing to get involved or express their true selves. And he said he's found that there's really five main traumas that a person goes through that affects their ability to have joy, happiness, and express their true selves. And he said it really comes down to just five key things. And I want to share with you what, what he said those were. Um, because he said that actually, if you look at children, very young children, they're just full of life, joy, happiness. Um, and it's because usually if they haven't experienced any trauma, that's because that's the natural state of a child and that's the natural state of a human being. It's only when other things come our way that we start to shut ourselves down. And he said it really comes down to these five things. And the acronym for these five things is W FAST, W-F-A-S-T. So what are the five things? W is worry. Worrying about what's going to happen in the future, worrying about things that have happened in your past that you did that you're worried could affect the way things will manifest in your present or in your future. The second thing is F is for fear. Fear of what's to come, fear that you could get hurt, rejected, uh, not get that thing you wanted, that job you wanted, that whatever it is. Feeling full of fear and that cripples you. A, anger. Feeling angry because you feel like certain things have happened to you in, in your past or in your present that cause you a lot of pain and anguish and you're you're angry you're full of full of anger and it's hard to let go of that s is shame if you felt hum humiliated in the past or embarrassed or made to look weird or whatever it is um that can really cripple you can it make you make you just feel like you can't be yourself and then t is really often an accumulation of these four things or it com comes from one of these one of these four things which is t is for trying to be someone that you're not because as a result of experiencing these things you end up becoming a different person because you feel like you can't be accepted for who you are and that in some ways is the greatest trauma and tragedy of all when people can't express their full selves and he actually said it's amazing that these five things can be um, expressed quite neatly with the five fingers. See, W for worry, because what does a baby do when they're worried or looking for comfort? They suck their thumb. F for fear, because if you want to intimidate a child or scare them, you point your finger at them. See, don't do that, and you create instill fear in them. Middle finger for anger, I think you, I'll leave that to you to figure out. <laughs> um, the fourth finger for shame and, and humiliation, um, this is the weakest of all the fingers. It's actually used, you find makeup artists will use it because it's the, to, you know, on their face because it's the least um, ag aggressive finger. And that's what shame and humiliation does. It can make you feel a bit weak and, 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 and numb and, and sort of want to just curl up uh, and sort of not face the world. And then this for trying to be someone you're not. If you think about someone who like uh, drinks a cup of tea and they put out their, their pinky finger to sort of be all pretentious, pretend, pretending to be someone you're not. You're not. Um, and I, I kind of feel like it, it really works. It's amazing how <laughs> uh, human biology can play into these uh, sociological and emotional uh, matters. But he actually said that if you think about it, all these five things actually come down to one emotion. All of these things really come down to one emotion, which is fear. Anger, really, it's you're, you're, you're worried that you're going to get angry again or something's going to trigger you to get ang angry. Humiliation, uh, you know, shame, it's really worried that you're going to feel humiliation or shame again. It all comes down to fear. All these things, it's, it's fear about the future. Am I going to be hurt, damaged uh, again in the future? So what if, that, if this all comes down to fear, what is the antidote to fear? He said the antidote to fear really has to be trust. And this is where God has to come into the, into the equation in our lives. Because if our lives are just a random accident and there's no orchestrator, no one guiding us, no heavenly father above, then, you know, that we are just subject to the whims of uh, change and chance. 
However, if there is a God, if God is intimately involved in our lives, if he's the sustainer of our lives and he's guiding our steps, then God is the creator and it is impossible for him to do anything other than create and give life and build us up rather than uh, tear us down. This is an absolutely essential part of, of creating a healthy human self. Without this, you end up feeling alone in the world. But with it, with trusting God, and it, it takes work, I need to work on it, everyone needs to work on it. Um, but with it, you're able to become much more accepting of your, your full self and to face the world with uh, pride and, and self-confidence and, and self-love because you're a creation of God and God is guiding your footsteps. And one of the most common phrases that the Torah uses is do not fear. We shouldn't feel fear and we should be walking forward uh, every single day confident that we're being guided and that we should have no shame in expressing our full selves because we are a creation of God and it'd be insulting to God to do nothing less than to express his creation to the fullest.